Hey, my name is Jacob Durbin and I am one of the lead videographers here at Bell Hill. And today I'm gonna to be talking about how I shoot a wedding film. Um, so to start out um, at Bella Hill, we book the weddings through our admin, Crystal. Um, she's kind of the one in charge of handling all the administrative work. She handles the contracts and figures out the schedule of the day. Um, so when the wedding day comes, I'll usually gather all my gear. Um, I have a little checklist that I go through and make sure I have every piece of gear. So tripods, light, um, audio equipment, cameras, everything like that. I make sure I have everything, pack it into my car. Um, depending on where the wedding is, I'll be sure to get there, usually about 15, minute, 15 to 30 minutes before I was even scheduled to be there, just to make sure I'm able to set up and have everything ready to roll right on time. So when I arrive, it's usually sometime during the prep. Um, typically, um, the bride is getting makeup done, I'm getting their hair done, um, usually the groom is somewhere else, maybe starting to get ready with the boys, um, things like that. So I'll, I'll usually pull up, and I love using my monopod um, for the prep shots. Um, so I have a Manfrotto monopod that I use mainly during these prep parts. It just helps me to get stable shots, get creative, I'm able to kind of pan, but it's also super mobile. So with a tripod, you know, it's big, kind of hefty, and you're, you can kind of get in the way, but with a monopod, it's just a stick, and you're, you're able to really just move around really quick and get all the shots that you need. My typical setup for this will be my GH5S, which I do shooting 4K in 60 frames per second. Um, this just helps me get a really, really sharp image, and I use a Canon 24 to 70 millimeter lens. Um, I had to get an adapter um, by Viltrox in order to make that camera work with the lens. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my typical setup. I'll be running with that um, for the majority of the morning, um, at least as my, my camera. Um, so I'll be getting quick shots. I'll make sure to get a lot of good details of the bride getting her makeup done, um, the bride getting her hair done. I get close-ups, wide shots. I try to get a variety of angles just and thinking about how to tell the story of the day, I just, I don't wanna get a ton of the same shots. I wanna kinda of switch it up, and I try not to also overshoot this part. Rather than just shooting a lot of footage, I try to shoot really good footage. So I'd rather get one really good clip rather than 10 trash clips. Um, so I really work on framing, composition, and the movement. So sometimes I'll do things multiple times in order to make sure that it's absolutely perfect for the wedding film. Typically sometime between then, I'll move over to the groom's room and start getting some shots of him. These are usually simple things like getting his tie on, adjusting the tie, um, his cufflinks, um, and then putting the suit on. These can be simple. Um, I usually also get some B-roll of just like um, all his groomsmen hanging out, um, maybe his dad if he's in the room. Um, things like that. So if, if I have a second shooter um, for that day, I'll usually have them getting B-roll during this part. This is a time when I'll send them out. Um, if we're in a city, um, I'll send them out and get some shots of maybe the streets, um, get some flowers, some trees. Depending on where the wedding is, they'll kind of start to get some of that. And if they're able to fly the drone, they can also get some drone shots. So while I'm getting all these prep shots, I'll have my second shooter out getting all the B-roll shots. And those just really, really help to tell the story and set the scene for the video. So moving on from there, usually it goes into the ceremony. So I'll drive over to the ceremony site. Oftentimes I'm pretty, pretty crunch for time. So I have to really hustle to get everything in place. Yeah, I'll have two cameras on the sides, one facing the bride, one facing the groom. And those will have 70 to 200 millimeter lenses. Um, on a GH4 and on a GH5. So I'll use, I'll use those two, those are kind of main cameras, and then I'll have a center camera um, that is my 5D Mark IV, and I will put a 24 to 70 on that. And that kind of just gets a wide shot uh, down the aisle of everything that's happening. So I kind of, those are my three main cameras, and then I also use a gimbal just to get some creative shots. So if there's a moment, um, where maybe the, the pastor's talking or there's a moment where I can just find time to get a couple creative shots, that's what I'll use the gimbal for. Also for the ceremony, I run audio. Um, usually that is done through labs, which I'm actually wearing right now. Um, I'll mic up the groom and the officiant. 
Now, I usually have a backup audio somewhere. Um, so usually if there's a DJ, I can plug into his system um, through a Tascam DR40. Um, otherwise, I'll use my little Tascam DR05, um, just a little handheld recorder, and put it right next to a speaker. And that's a good backup as well. Um, moving on from there, um, it will usually go into some kind of photo session. Um, for these, I try to get really, really creative shots. And I'm not really, I'm, I'm working with the photographer, but not necessarily getting the same shots um, because sometimes I like to add a little bit of movement. So usually the photographer will pose them in a certain way um, and I will kind of just instruct them to move um, maybe a hand or put their foreheads together, or just add a little bit of movement um, to the shot just to make it more interesting. Because if they're just standing still, it doesn't look as good in film. For the reception, I usually use a three camera setup for speeches. We also use lighting equipment um, and audio equipment. So I'll start out with the light. I use a Kame TV um, LED um, spotlight. This, this just kind of helps to add a little bit more dramatic effect when they're giving speeches and for the first dances. Yeah, for, for speeches, I'll be using my GH5S as a main camera on a 70 to 200 millimeter lens. This will help me get a really nice tight shot. Try to make it very interesting, not up against like a flat wall. I try to add like a little bit of depth to it um, as much as possible. Um, and I usually shoot on the opposite side of the light. And then I'll have another camera um, this is usually the GH5 on another 70 to 200 millimeter lens, and this is pointed right at the couple. So during the speeches, I'm getting one really solid shot of the speaker, and then one tripod shot of the couple. And I can usually just leave that couple camera there unmanned, and it will be fine. And then I'll have my second shooter manning the speaker camera. For first dances, it's also very similar, except this time um, I'll have my GH5S on the gimbal with that wide seven to 14 millimeter lens. Um, and then the GH5 with a 70 to 200 getting nice tight shots. So I'll be roaming around getting the, the creative gimbal shots when my second shooter will be on the 70 to 200 getting tight, tight cropped angles. Um, sometimes I also have the second shooter get a couple reactions um, from like the parents as they're dancing or other guests um, just sometime during the dance um, because those reactions are sometimes really cool. So, yeah. And then typically I'll stay for a bit. The, after the first dances, it will, they'll go into a big party. Um, during this party, I'll be getting a lot of creative gimbal shots and even some handheld. So once again, I'll bring the GH5 um, with that 24 to 70 lens and go handheld and just get some really, really cool, creative close-up shots of just guest dancing and the partying. Um, and yeah, I'll usually just get enough um, to where I know hey, this is enough for, for the highlight film. And yeah, that's about it. So that's how we shoot a wedding film at Bella Hill.